chapter of Genesis, beginning at the third verse. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when the brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray thee, pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made omniscience to my sheep. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the, and the eleven stars made obscience to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is the dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brothers, his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word and sanctify these truths in our heart. Amen. 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 Truly we God and God, we thank God for his favor and his grace. Thank God for another day and opportunity to celebrate not only your anniversary and birthday, but service unto the Lord. We are grateful and thankful to be here. Thank you, New Life, for the invitation, and we thank how God allowed us even to arrive safe. Truly, God is a good God. Worthy to be praised. I thank you. I don't take it for granted. I don't care if you're in traffic or out of traffic. The fact that you arrived at your destination is a blessing, and I'm grateful to God for his favor and the angels that are dispatched on our behalf so that we can arrive where we intend to go. Yes, sir. I thank the Lord for his favor, give honor to God and Bishop Simmons and to all the elders and laborers and co-laborers here and all of them that made their way to the house of God. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that because if you look around and if you've been in church any length of time, it seems that the church has gone out of style. But I thank God that we still have a heart to know him. And I know I can't be a believer if I, unless I attend church and be amongst them that believe. So I'm glad that I'm amongst them that believe. Years ago he said I'm among them that are sanctified. So I'm glad that I'm among them that speak the same thing and want to if, if nothing else but to give God some glory and some praise he has yet to receive. So I'm grateful to God and thank God for you. As I, as I was meditating on this, uh, on this word for the day, I thought about many things, but I don't know about you, but I'm a little troubled with some things that go on in the world and yeah. the mindset of the nations. And I'm not surprised because the word of God warns us. It yeah. says Amen. that in the last days, perilous times will yes. come. And believe me, we are in these perilous times. Yeah. We're in times of great uh, destruction and discussion and things are going on and the Bible said men should be lovers of pleasure yes. more than lovers of God and we see that all over and everywhere 
But I thank God that even though God may not be reverenced among everybody, nor even acknowledged, I thank God for the believers that yet name the name of Christ yeah. and know in whom, glory to God, they have believed. Yeah. I'm glad about that. The Bible says, even in the book of Proverbs, it said that every man sees himself in his own way. Solomon said, every way of man is right in his own eyes. Yeah. But I'm glad that God gives us a barometer, a guideline, a yardstick, which is his word that allows us to see it as God sees it and believe it as God has spoken it. So I'm glad about that. I appreciate what the Lord has done. The Bible declares that God is blessed when we put our trust in him. It says, blessed is the man that put his trust in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. The Lord is my hope. I don't know about you. He's my hope. I mean, with everything going on, you you better put your trust in the Lord. You better put your hope in God. You better you better know him as you've never known him before. Years ago, they said, listen, I got a no-so salvation. I know him. I'm glad and I'm, sa I'm satisfied in knowing Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. It's not just a whim. It's not just a cliche. I thank God for salvation. And I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded. You ain't got to convince me no more. I don't, listen, listen. If this was my last day in church, you wouldn't have to convince me anymore because I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded. And he's able to keep me. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Those things I committed unto him. Because God's word cannot fail. And what God has promised, God will indeed bring to pass. Isn't that good to know? I, I, I don't know anybody on this earth that I can trust them to the extent that whatever they say, they're going to bring it to pass. But when God does it, you can stand at the bus stop and pat your foot because it's about to come to pass. When God says it, he means it. God don't open his mouth to gargle. He don't open his mouth to breathe. But when God speaks a word, it brings forth what he has spoken. And I'm glad about that. That's my confidence. That's my, that's my joy. That's my peace. And I'm glad that God's people can have confidence and be empowered to trust God through the hard times, through the good times, through the times of struggle, through the times of victory, we can put our trust yeah. yes, yes. in him. Amen. Put our trust in him. The Bible says in Acts 2 and 17, it shall come to pass in the last days. He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see this. Your old men shall dream dreams. Mm -hmm. God has a future yes. for them that believe. This is not the end. God's going to bring it to conclusion. I don't care how you see it. I don't care what you expect. God has the last word. Amen. And what God has spoken, he will bring to pass. He told the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 and 11. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And plans to give you hope. And a future, and that's out of the NIV. In other words, God didn't just throw clay up against the wall. God had a purpose and a plan. He spoke into your life and brought you into existence. And today, amen, what it is, September uh, uh, 30th, yeah. God brought back, uh, he knew you'd be here today yeah. in this place. Right. Oh, right. God, I thank you. Thank you. And thank God you. has a perfect plan for his people. And I'm so glad that by the Spirit of God, we're able to see the plan of God. In other words, God reveals himself. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, it says, but as it is written, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered in the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. This lets me to know that God is not privy or give privy information to them that are not his. But them that are his, he says, I'm giving you my revelation yeah. by my inspiration so you can know my will. Yeah. He said, you can't feel it, you can't taste it, you can't even perceive it. He said, but I reveal it unto you because you put your glory to God, your trust in me. Yeah. Amen. So 
But God said, listen, I let you know all about me. I let you know the deep things. So when somebody's acting deep and they're a believer, they didn't really know the deep things. Because if you know the deep things that God has revealed to you, you got to ponder that thing for a minute. Because God talk is crazy talk. It's not stuff you share with everybody. Because everybody's, listen, listen, everybody's in fel- not in fellowship. Oftentimes you share what God has spoken. And oftentimes people just want to hear it because they got ears to hear but many times when God is speaking a word, you got to step back and say, is this really God speaking? Is this being confirmed by his word? Amen. Some folk come to church for fellowship. Some folk come to church for networking. They just want to find out where they can get to for the next spot. But if you have fellowship with God, and according to 1 John, amen, the first chapter, it says, listen, them that walk in the light have fellowship with God. So even though we connect, the connection is based on the fellowship of what God has shared with you, which are his deep things that only you and I, glory to God, can know. Yes. So what we share is what God has revealed. It's, and listen, it's not a secret to God, but it's made known to us. And I'm glad about that. I'm so glad that God reveals himself by the spirit of God so when the phonies come in our place, we can, we can spot them out. So when the foolishness comes, we can spot it out. When the stuff is not of God, it can be revealed. Listen, I'm not even bothered by the stuff. I'm not bothered by the stuff I hear because God can whisper a word in your spirit and settle you such to know this. It ain't God. Don't even look that way. He said, listen, keep your eyes fixed on me. Listen, I have the word. I have the promise. I have the witness. Isn't that, isn't that good that God will bear witness to what he has revealed? How does God do that? I mean, I didn't tell you my business, but because we're believers, I walk up to you and you give me a witness to what God spoke out of his deep things of my heart, and I say, God just told me that. And I know, listen, you couldn't have known it. Glory to God. Unless God would reveal it. So I'm glad about that. That God, by his spirit, is able to communicate to us his will. So nobody can steal it. Glory to God. Nobody can copy it. Nobody can even tell you what he said. They can bear witness that he told you something. But they can't tell you what he said. Glory to God. Only you, by the witness, can know that God has confirmed himself. By his word and by the unction, amen, of his spirit. Oh, God, I thank you. God reveals himself exclusively to us who believe that we might know the unknown. Mm. Come on now. God done reveal some stuff to you you didn't study for, you didn't go to school, you didn't even get, you didn't take a class for. He just revealed it. Glory to God. Now, it might took you a while to get it, but he revealed it. Glory to God. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word. I thank God that God uses many tools, such as vision and dreams, to bring us to a place that we can bear witness to what God has spoken. And even in our text today, we're speaking about Joseph. Joseph's story is, is known to everybody. who You've been in the Bible, you know, you've been in the Word any length of time, you know the story of Joseph. But the Bible says, where there's no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. Vision is almost viewed instantaneously. In other words, God allows the vision that he shows you to be the incentive or the reminder for you to walk in the purpose that he's called you. In other words, somebody said, well, God just showed it, and a vision came in. I mean, it came as fast as it left. Yes. But you know it pushed you. Glory to God, it pushed you into your purpose. You, you didn't understand it. All you know, you, you got a nudge into your purpose as God just showed you what was about to transpire, not that listen, not weeks ahead, not years ahead, but right then. Amen. And God will make himself known Amen. by vision. Wow. Amen. Amen. And dream. So vision really impacts my purpose as God aligns me and pushes yeah. me yeah. into my destiny. So all along your path, all along as you walk in the purpose of God, God will give you vision so that you keep on moving uh, and continue to walk in the blueprint of your, listen, of your destiny so that you can come to its conclusion. 
Yeah. And that can only be known yeah. by you and God. Right. But God will give you witness enough yeah. to let you know that it's him. Yeah. Yeah. So thank God for vision. Yeah. Thank God for dream. I, I, listen, a dream is, it, it just, it's interesting. I was thinking about this the other day. Dream, when you, when you dream a thing, dream, dream is a lot different than a vision. Because a dream can, can cause you to, you can see it as well as hear it mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then when you wake up in the morning from the dream, mm -hmm. or if God allowed you to go fall off into a dream, you wake up remembering. Yes. Vision's a little different. Vision, vision gives you a push. But a dream will cause you to sit back and salivate yes. over what God showed you. Yes. God showed you being blessed and you living like you're not. God showed you empty and God showed you full, but you're living empty. In a dream, God will show you the climax, oh. glory to God, Go before you even step into yes. the purpose. Yes. Go ahead, boss. And God uses that to let us know that he's about to shift, yes. that there's a shift taking yes. place. Yes. So God will give you vision to shift you and dreams to bring you into your purpose. God, I thank you. Because as I read God's word, because folk think it's spooky. Folks think it's, you know, if I'm spiritual, I'm this. You have folk that walk around and, and, and declare that what they speak is of God, but it's not necessarily the case. Visions and dreams come from God. And if it is of God, God is inclined to speak when he wants to, to say when he wants to, mm -hmm. and to do it when he wants to. Yes. So I really don't have the unction to do it of my own. God's got to make known what he would declare for me to know. So look at this now. I, I, I love this story because your gift, Joseph was a gifted individual. Joseph had a gifting that he would interpret dreams. But God used dreams to show dirt, uh, Joseph his destiny. And here is one who has a gifting because your gifting really ties you to your purpose. Amen. Because he said all good, uh, good and perfect gifts come from God with whom there's no shadow of turning. In other words, God said, I didn't make any mistake when I gave you the gift. I gave you the gift to handle a, a business. I gave you the gift of administration. I gave you the gift of preaching. I gave you the gift of this or the gift of that. That's only to, to listen, to tie you into your purpose so you can come to the end, uh, listen, of your journey, of your purpose, of your plan, of what God has purposed for your life. We read at Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. How is it working together? Yeah. It's working together because God is giving us the push and impacting us us by showing us daily what we need to know, occasionally giving us a vision so we can be pushed from left to right or for, uh, straight ahead and bringing us to a place, if you will, of climax so that we know that we're on the right trail Amen. and trusting God for the end. Amen. That's why running the race is so important. Yeah. When we run the race, all of us are gifted to be in our own lane. Amen. Amen. I don't have to run in your lane. You don't have to run in my lane. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before. We're all running in the race. We're all gifted to be in the test. And we're all running. We may not all in there at the same time. But we're all running and Jesus is at the finish line. Amen. He's the conclusion. He's the climax. But understand that I don't even have to, listen, nudge you out. I don't have to, you don't have to nudge me out. We're all running. Because God has given us our individual gifting, listen, listen, to bring us to conclusion. Amen. I don't have to be jealous of you. You ain't got to be jealous of me. Amen. Amen. God is going to do what he has promised. What God has for me could never be for you. Amen. Glory to God. I don't have to, listen, I don't have to envy you. You don't have to envy me. All I got to do is trust God and stay in the purpose. Stay in the plan. And as God shift me, as God push me, as God give me unction to move to the left, to move to the right, just take him at Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. Mm -hmm. I thank you. But let, let, let's look at Joseph real quick here. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. In our text out of uh, Genesis 37 and uh, 5 through 11, Joseph was the firstborn son of Rachel and Jacob. 
uh, in the scripture here, it refers to his name as Israel. His name had been changed. But he's the firstborn son of Jacob and Israel. And Rachel was barren. Mm -hmm. And remember, Jacob's father-in-law tricked him. And that's why he's called the supplanter. He's called the trickster. All that was still part of God's plan. But he's called all that. And Jacob had worked seven years for Rachel. And then he come to find out he had tricked him instead of instead of a, 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 a Rachel being in the, the bridegroom, the chamber, he stuck Leah in the chamber. Amen. So then he had to work another seven years in order for him to marry Rachel. But it was still the plan of God. God still had a purpose for it. So in the process of that, God still allowed Rachel to be barren. Mm -hmm. But Rachel, God, she prayed, she believed God, she did what God asked her, she was trusting God for a result, and God opened up her womb. And she had a son, his name was Joseph. And Joseph was the favorite child of Jacob, or Israel. The favorite child. In other words, you know when you've been chosen, when somebody does that extra for you and always expecting much more of you. And that's the way it is with, as being a child of God. Because I am a God, child of God, God expects much more of me. So, so was the case with Joseph. And unfortunately, his other brothers, his other ten brothers at the time, they, 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 they despised him. They didn't like him. And even our text here... Uh, Joseph has a dream. Mm -hmm. And he dreams that he's in a field and the sheep that represented him was bigger than all the other sheep. And all the other sheep bowed down to him. And he went and told his brothers. And the Bible said that, I, I love this. See, the Bible says, listen, and his brothers shall we indeed reign over you. And they hated him. Just because God has given you a word. Doesn't mean folk will be in agreement. Doesn't mean folk will believe it. Doesn't mean folk will applaud it. But God gave him a dream. And if I might use for a word this afternoon, it will be the tales of a dreamer. Amen. The tales of a dreamer. So, Jake, so Joseph dreams his dream, and then God does the unthinkable, God does the unspeakable and allows Joseph to dream again. God help us. <laughs> See, I could have said he was telling a tale the first time he spoke it. But when he came back the second time, he came back with an even bigger dream. He said, not only am I being exalted in the field, he said, I'm being exalted in heaven. I saw the sun, the moon, and everything else bow down to it. And the interesting part is, Jacob, I mean, should I say, Joseph dreamed the dream the second time. Ooh, Lord. And it stirred up the fire. It stirred up the hatred in his home. And he went and told his dad this time. And his dad said, what, so you, you, I, I'm going to bow down to you? And his dad rebuked him. Said, no, 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 it shouldn't be. I rebuked him. But the Bible said he rebuked him, but he really observed him later. He said, listen, now, he's my favorite child. And it's unlike him to say something just out of his mouth. So the father rebuked him and on the other hand observed him. He said, hmm, there might be something to this. Now his brothers got all upset. You know the story. They were, they, they, you know, he's the younger brother, so they're going to follow them, follow the older brothers around. And then the brothers got together and said, listen, we're going to kill him. Let me ask you something. Isn't that something that a family would kill one another. Oh God, I don't want to be testifying for nobody here. But you can hate folk enough to want them dead. And there was such jealousy because not only was he the favorite son, but his dad had made him a nice coat. Amen. They look better than everybody's coat. I thought about it. When I went to my prom back in the day, I had some high top comforts on. I hadn't seen high top comforts. I thought I was looking good. Amen. But the Bible said he made him a coat of many colors. Many colors. So much so that it caused them to be jealous of him. And they sought to kill him. They hated him. He was chosen by God. He was a special child. He was the favorite choice of his father. And his brothers hated him. Now the interesting, when he first dreamed the dream, he was amazed 
at what God has shown him. But oftentimes when God shows you something and God reveals something to you, when you share the dream or what God has spoken, many times you receive rejection <coughs> instead of a skeptic. And he received rejection such so that they sought to kill him. They envied him, they hated him, and amen, they didn't mean good for him. And the Bible said they went out, and in Genesis 37 and uh, 9, he said they, they, they went out, he dreamed another dream, and, and they hated him and envied him for it. Glory to God. So even though you dream it and you're amazed, everybody else may reject you because you had it. Amen. So in the process of time, his brothers seek to destroy him, seek to kill him, because this is nothing more than the tale of a dream. Can't mean anything. It's just the tales of a dream. It's somebody just opening their mouth and saying nothing. But God had a plan and a purpose. The Bible says in Genesis 37 uh, in 19, they said, look at it. Here comes the dreamer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, folk will name call you. When you appear to be more than you are, but God will give you a word that will be so full in you that it seems crazy. I told you, God talk is crazy. It will seem so crazy that you, uh, listen, hesitate in sharing it. God told me I was going to be blessed. God told me I was going to do this or do that. And you're hesitant in sharing it because somebody said you're old and you're feeble. You're not able to do what you have spoken but God will give you such a drive in your spirit yes. that it'll cause you and push you into your purpose. Oh, God, I thank you. And, they, and the Bible says they took him, they cast him into a pit, amen, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it, and the other brothers sought to kill him, but the one brother said, no, don't kill him, let's, let's, let's sell him, let's give him away. And in the process of time, the Bible says in Genesis 37 and 28, uh -huh. there was a, a band of Midianites come by. And the Midianites really were hated of the Jews. Remember the Midianites with, uh, amen, um, I can't think of his name right now. The Midianites who, who, who gave the Israelite fits. Somebody ought to know. Somebody should have said it before I said it, but anyway. The Midianites, and they came through Gideon, the Gideonite and the Midianites, but they came through and they sold Joseph into slavery. Joseph was 17 years old at the time. 17 years old at the time. And then the brothers sought to cover it up. They took some animal's blood and put it on the coat and went back to dad and said, listen, a wild animal done got him and we don't know where he is. And, and the dad, listen, left, went left with mourning and grief. Right, right. Amen. He said, my, my, listen, listen, my favorite son is gone because the brothers sought to cover their tracks, lied about his dying. Amen. And, in, and, and eventually lied to their father. All because the tale of a dreamer caused him to be ostracized, pushed aside. See, we don't have enough dreamers today. Everybody wants to gauge you and tell you how far you can go. Everybody wants to tell you what you can be. But I understand this. God has a purpose and a plan for all who put their trust in him. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. So they took Joseph's coat and, and all that. And, and in the process, Joseph is sold to the Midianites. And then the Bible says that Joseph was brought to Egypt in the 39th uh, chapter of Genesis. He's brought to Egypt in Potiphar's house. So from 17 to 28... Joseph was in part of his house almost 11 years. Now, now, understand this. When the hand of God is on your life, though you may have experienced amazement at what God was going to do, and with amazement came some, listen, some disappointment, God in the process of the move of God on your life, God will still do what he has promised. Understand this. God, listen, if God picked you up, and put his seal on your life. That listen, listen, the seal will not depart. The, listen, the, 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 the ability God gives us to be here. In other words, God don't unchoose us. So even though Joseph was really 
a slave in Potiphar's house. Mm -hmm. The Bible says here in Genesis 31 and 9, and Joseph was brought to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of, of the guard, and Egyptian brought him through the hand of the Ishmaelites, which he brought, uh, which he brought him down hither. And the Lord, listen, listen to this, beloved, listen to this. Even though it seemed like he was off track because he was so, uh, sold into slavery, the Bible says, he was, uh, and the Lord was with Joseph. He was a prosperous man. This is in his, listen, his handler's house. In the house of a, listen, in the house of an Egyptian, an officer of the Pharaoh. Listen, and he's being blessed by God. Look at this now. And the Lord was with Joseph and he brought him and he was prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And the master saw. Mm -hmm. that the Lord was with him and the Lord made all that he did to prosper mm -hmm. in his hand. Amen. Everything Joseph touched Everything. caused him to prosper. Now you would think he had it made. He's no longer in the pit. He's no longer threatened by his life and God allows him to walk around with authority and power in somebody else's house. Lord. Now the Bible goes on a little further. And Joseph found grace in his sight, served him. He made him overseer over the house. Don't tell me God can't cause you to rise up in the midst of what seemingly is unfriendly territory. God will cause you to be blessed. Talk to the Israelites. They were placed in the land of Goshen. And God blessed them yes. in Goshen. Don't tell me God won't bless you when he has a purpose for your life. But see, this is, if you look at it, this is just a tale of a dreamer. But I'm so glad that this dreamer dreamed again. Amen. Didn't allow his disappointment or discouragement to deter him for what God had spoken to him. Amen, amen, amen. Here's this, listen. And God made, and, uh, and uh, his, his master made him overseer. Blessed his the, the Egyptian's house was blessed in the fifth verse, and the blessing of the Lord mm -hmm. was upon the house. If you are a believer today and you live in a house with unbelievers and they refuse to believe, the only reason the grace of God is over that house Amen. is because of you. Amen. Because God will bless the house Amen. and the place Amen. and wherever you put. Listen, he told Joshua, wherever you put your feet, uh -huh. I'm going to bless. Uh -huh. Wherever you walk, Ooh. wherever you step. Yeah. So if you in the house yeah. uh, with them that don't believe, trust this. God is giving them time. God is blessing you on their behalf. Mm -hmm. And listen, and sustaining them with the grace because the hand Amen. of the Lord is on your life. Yeah. Now, the interest, he was 28 years old. Let, listen, listen, living all right, living kind of fat. He didn't have a problem. <laughs> then all of a sudden, the, the missus of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay. Y'all have heard this before? <laughs> the missus of the house. <laughs> Go ahead, boss. The missus of the house <laughs> came at him. And he resisted him. Let me, let me say that again. The missus of the house came at him and he resisted him. All right, all right. So I folks don't think that happens, but it does. He resisted him, her. And she lied on him. Here's another lie. Because his brother had lied on him and threw him in the pit. Now here's the case. 11 years later, here, listen. He is, he, is, he is approached by the missus of the house. He rejects her. She lies and said that she he, she took uh, uh, he tore her clothes, and I got part of his clothing. And she goes and tells Potiphar, who's the head of the house, tells him that this slave you brought into my house mm -hmm. has done this evil thing. Amen. And the Bible says they take him, and then they put him in jail. Yeah. 11 years. Amen. It seemed like God was about to move somewhere else. <laughs> Listen, it's been wonderful. I mean, I haven't had a problem in 11 years. And now I'm in the pit. I went from the palace, if you will, to the pit. I don't know why God does that. God will allow you to be riding real smooth. And then all of a sudden allow all hell to break out in your life and take you from somewhere to nowhere. 
And he did it in the case of Joseph. Now Joseph again finds himself in jail. And even in jail, you know, listen, when the favor of God is on your life, it don't matter whether you're in jail, it don't matter whether you're in school, it don't matter what you're doing, the favor of God will rise to the top just like cream in coffee. It will rise to the top. And as soon as, listen, listen, he's 28 years old, he goes to jail, and the Bible said they put him in prison, Genesis 39 and 20. He said, but the Lord again was with Joseph. Listen, I'd rather have the Lord with me in Potiphar's house, but the Lord allowed him, listen, to be blessed in prison. And even in prison, amen, the keeper of the guards saw the favor of God. It almost reminds me of Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Even though they were prisoners, God gave them favor in the house. See, you don't have to make favor. You don't have to make it happen. God will bring to pass what he has promised. Joseph is in prison. You couldn't get any worse. Amen. He was sitting at the table now eating off the floor. Amen. That's the truth. He went from the palace to the prison. Amen. Amen. Under guards being watched. When the hand of God is on your life, no weapon that is formed against you, no stick, no person, no stuff, nothing that is formed against you shall prosper. So while he's in jail, the, 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 the Pharaoh has a bad day. I don't know, he must have ate something or whatever. But the Pharaoh has a bad day. He throws his butler in jail. He throws his baker in jail. And basically said, you're going to stay there until I get tired. Amen. Basically, that's what it was. He said, you're going to stay there until I get tired. Amen. And they go to jail. And then God causes things to come into the favor of Joseph. Now, Joseph is in jail. Amen. Even though he's blessed, let's understand this. He's still in jail. Oh, I love a Bible ministry or a jail ministry, but I don't want to be in jail having it. <laughs> so he's in jail, and, and he's there, and the Bible says that the baker has, uh, the butler has a dream, and the baker has a dream. And in the process of time, they recognize the anointing that is on Joseph life. Now Joseph had the gift of interpreting dreams. He didn't make the dream because God gave it to him. Just like you and I, I don't care if somebody say I got a gift of prophecy. You didn't make the prophecy, God gave it to you. Amen. And if you got any interpretation of it, God gave it. Amen. So is Joseph. Joseph didn't have nothing that God didn't give him. That's right, that's right. So in the process of time, Joseph says, listen, Joseph said, listen, they came to him and said, listen, we had a dream. And the baker, uh, butler says, listen, I had a dream and this and that happened. And he said, I want you to, if you can, so Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph tells him, listen, the dream shows me, uh, Mr. Baker, that you're going to be restored in three days. Amen. You Listen, even though you're in jail now, you're going to be restored in three days. Amen. So as it was, as Joseph said, in three days, he was restored back to his position in Pharaoh's house. Now, Joseph asked the baker one thing. He says, in Genesis 40, 14, he said, but think on me. Mm -hmm. yeah. When it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me to Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. He said, listen, listen, I, I just told you a real good thing. God revealed to me a blessing that you want to come out. Amen. You, isn't that good when God tells you you're going to come out? Yeah. You're going through something, and then God, by his infinite yeah. wisdom, will yeah. give you a vision showing yourself out. Yeah. And he showed him, you're going to be out. But when the butler got there, and the Bible says that when he got there, uh, in Genesis 14, 23, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. <laughs> Oftentimes, when God is fulfilling your purpose, God does not move when we anticipate. Amen. Now, even though Joseph did a good thing, he felt that God was obliged to move. God, I'm doing your work. I've been faithful. Yeah. Not that you owe me nothing, but I know you can't miss what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be seeing it, God. I mean, I just did a good thing. This man would have died. He wouldn't have had a, listen, he wouldn't have had a shot because he didn't know what was going to happen. Look at the baker. I told the baker, you're going to die. They're going to hang you. 
And in three days, the baker was home. But the butler, he said, I restored him by the word you gave me. So, Lord, I'm expecting a shift. I've done what you asked. I'm expecting a shift. And oftentimes, God don't move. Oh, glory to God. When you say, listen, this got to be the right time because what just happened was glorious and the move of God was great, so God moved. Tales of a dreamer. Yes, sir. He said, listen, I done dreamed it, God. Yeah. I done interpreted God. And you didn't move. Yeah. So oftentimes when we anticipate God to move, we still have to endure disappointment and wait. Yeah. Oh, God, I thank you. Yeah. You still got to sit and wait yeah. on God to move. Yeah. You can't nudge God. You can't push God. So even though we anticipate it's the right time, God will move in whatever season he chooses. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. So now Joseph is still in jail. Yeah. Still in prison. Two more years wow. he's in jail. I mean, he gave a good word when he first got there, and they kept him. Sometimes you, you know, you can do so well sometimes and be blessed and be doing God. You say, listen, I can understand why Jeremiah said, I ain't opening my mouth no more. <laughs> Every time I open my mouth, stuff happened to me. I'm not going to speak his name. I'm not going to wave my hand. I won't even go to church no more. Bible study, I'll see you later. Wouldn't want to be here. Ben and Jeremiah said it was just like, what, fire? He said, shut up in my bones. It's not a tale I'm telling. It's the truth because God allows you through the process of the journey to dream again. And let you know it ain't over. It ain't over till God says it's over. So in the process of time, we moving right along. Two years later, Joseph is 30 now. Been away from his brothers for 17 years. Hasn't seen a family member, chick nor chicken, in 17 years. And the Bible says Pharaoh dreams a dream. And he shows him some fat cows and fat cattle. And then he shows him seven fat cows. And, and he dreams again. He, he, he's troubled by the dream. Then he dreams again. Oh, thank God for another dream. Thank God for allowing me to dream again. Because I don't just want it to be the tale of a dreamer. I want it to be what God has spoken. So God, let me dream again. Oh, God, let me, let me imagine it again as you share it with me. So Pharaoh has a dream. Then he dreams again and sees seven lean cows. And Pharaoh is troubled. He gets his philosophers, he gets his magicians, he gets his soothsayers, and nobody can interpret the dream. Ooh. And I can imagine Joseph still in jail, probably had fixed up his room. <laughs> Because God hadn't moved on his behalf. It was two years. Yeah, put pictures on the wall. He was going to be there for a minute. Because he had done right and got wrong for it. Done the right thing. And God didn't move. So he said, listen, I'm just going to have to wait. Listen, God's going to move when he get ready to move. Amen. And the Bible declares that, I love this, I love this. Mm -hmm. Genesis 41 and 12, as the butler was seeing the frustration on his master's face. And I understand this, I have to laugh because this kind of came to me later on. The last time the butler saw the frustration of Pharaoh, he found himself in jail. So I can imagine he wanted to do anything he could to make it a better day. Think about it. When you read this, you got to think about this thing. The last time he saw him, upset, Pharaoh said, prison, you go. So he comes down there. Two years later, he sees him. And the Pharaoh's walking around with a sad countenance because he cannot get the interpretation for the dream and it's troubling him. And then the, the, then the old butler said, wait a minute. I got something that can help me. I'm pretty sure he looked at them and said, I ain't going back to jail. Amen. 
Genesis 41 and 12, and there was with me a young man, a Hebrew, a servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dream. To each man according to his dream, he did interpret. And the Bible says that they went and got Joseph, cleaned him up, brought him in before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asked him, said, interpret the dream. He said, because you have the gift. And he said, no, no, I don't have the gift. Let's God give it to me. In other words, the interpretation I got, he said, it's not mine. Uh -huh. So David, he, he, listen, he went from anticipation to acceptance. Yeah. He went from acceptance, amen, to, and listen, to being to the point of, of gratification because he knew God was establishing the dream. Yeah. That he had promised. Oh God, I thank you. So he's brought up, he interprets the dream, he tells Pharaoh, and then Pharaoh says, Listen, in Genesis 41 and 40, he says, Thou shalt be over my house. Wow. Wow. Uh huh. And according unto thy word shall thy people be ruled, only in thy throne will I be great. And Pharaoh said, I have set you over the land of Egypt. Wow. He went from prison to the palace. To have all authority and security mm -hmm. that he didn't have with his own family. Mm -hmm. wow. And God set him in place. Yeah. But that's not the end of the story. Yeah. Because the dream was about his family. Yeah. And years later, seven years later, oh God, I thank you for your word. His brother, or should I say two years later, 42, the brothers come in. Yeah. It was the second year of the famine, if you will. No, I'm sorry, they, uh, he was 39 years old because he was 30 when Pharaoh yeah. brought him up. 39 years old, his brothers come to Egypt to get food because they're starving by, about the, because of the famine. This was the second year of the famine that God had gave Joseph wisdom on and said, listen, hey, listen, when, when we bless, save some stuff so that when the famine comes, we won't be starving. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then the second year of the famine, the family comes and Joseph, of course, played a little game on them because he was still angry at them yeah. for them trying to kill him. I think I'd better still a little bit angry. You tried to kill me? I'm gonna go, I'm, look, listen, you're going to triple fall. You're going to do something. I ain't going to kill you, but something about to happen. So in the process of time, God takes Joseph and allows him because Joseph said, listen, listen, you can't leave. He said, you stole some stuff from us. He said, bring, 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 a, you got any more children? He said, I got a younger brother. And Benjamin was Joseph's brother. Wow. Amen. Wow. He said, bring him back. I'll hold him here and then bring the father back. So Joseph was using this to bring around. Now, if you stop and think, the sun, the moon, and everybody was going to. God was putting everybody in place. He said, you can't get this until dad shows up. You can't get this until the younger brother shows up. So he said, bring them all. Because he had dreamed a dream. Glory to God. That everybody would bow down to him. So he said, no. He said, go back and get your brother. Go back and get your father. And they all came up. And then when he revealed himself. Oh God. He let them know that, listen, listen. God has sent me a hand. You don't know where God will send you. Your responsibility is to go. He said, God sent me. He said, he sent me a hand. I've been through a frustration. I've been through disappointment. But God sent me ahead. He said, my gift, ooh, glory to God, is to lay a groundwork and a framework for my people. Seventy people went into Egypt under the authority of Joseph. And over, what, three million came out. Now, had Joseph got upset and given up and not Remember that he dreamed again. Yeah. Ooh, glory. He's been lost in it. He would have missed out. But God allowed him to tell the dreamer yes. to dream again. Yes. And look what the Bible says here. Joseph told him, listen now. He says, listen. He says in Genesis 42 and 7, and God sent me before you mm -hmm. to preserve you a posterity yes, in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. I'm sure it didn't look great when he was in the pit. I'm sure it didn't look great in Potiphar's house. Even though he was comfortable, it was not what God intended. Even though 
you're in a place now and everything kind of relaxed, mm -hmm. your situation is okay, be prepared for God uh, to dream again. Mm -hmm. Woo! Woo! God, listen, God will give you another dream to shift you yes, into yes. the purpose. Yes. Amen. Amen. All, listen, all you got to do is trust him. Yes. Take him at it. You don't know what posterity God is sending you ahead for. You don't know what legacy you're leaving behind because God has given you a dream. Mm -hmm. And God in the process uh, will show you through visions, uh, through, show you through his word. And then God will say, listen, I'm going to make you dream again. Yes, sir. We've been in new beginnings. Almost 20 years. Amen. 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 Been where we are right now. Glory to God. Almost 14 years in the building. And God, from the beginning, the onset, even before it was even carved out, God showed it full. And listen, and that was a dream. And I still see it as such. I'm listen, and I'm not concerned about the number. I'm not concerned even about the fullness. Uh, all I know is God has a blueprint. Amen. Yeah. Uh, listen, listen. If I enjoy it, I'm fine with it. But God has a blueprint for your life. Uh, and if God gives you the unction, let him shift you into your purpose. Uh -huh. Don't go, listen. Don't go, don't push stuff aside. Uh, like it don't mean nothing. Uh, if God keeps giving you the same dream, uh, it must mean something. Uh -huh. It must mean something. Ooh, now I'm talking to them, like I said, that know God. Them that are his children. I ain't talking about flipping and flopping and acting crazy and don't believe nothing. I'm talking about them that have an ear to hear what God is saying. Ooh, glory. Joseph waited and listened. And God brought him from the pit to the house, to the prison, to the palace, and laid a legacy. Now the Bible said, now I understand this. Joseph was the instrument God used to bless the children of Israel. And the Bible says that after Joseph passed, there rose up a Pharaoh. Ooh. That knew not Joseph. Now understand this. In the blessing of God, you got to walk in the blessing. Oh, God, you got to walk in it. Amen. You just can't do anything and everything with no regard and no reverence to God. But if God is blessing your life and you're walking in the purpose and in the plan of God, the blessing of God will remain on you. But in the process of time, God still, because of his word to Abraham, his word to Isaac, his word to Jacob, allowed Israel to multiply. So God told Israel, I mean told Abraham, he said, your seed will be like the sand, will be like the stars in the sky. You won't be able to number it. The tales of a dreamer. Amen. Your responsibility as a believer mm -hmm. is to dream again. Yeah. It's to dream again. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God for the dream here. Yes, sir. Thank God for the dream here. Like somebody had. God bless you.